Beshem Hashem Naaseven Atzliya Chodesh Tov to anybody, even though we know this is the most difficult month for the Jews, but we hope with the coming of Mashiach, we're definitely in somebody, a couple of people actually asked me, are we, is Mashiach close? Definitely this pandemic has turned the world upside down, so we definitely want Mashiach now. We're on the uh, first chapter still, believe it or not, of Rav Volbe. Eitan, are you following inside? Yeah. It says, He says that using our brain to learn Torah isn't like a dry thing. Like Mathematica. Right? That's why the Grozal says, like when you learn Torah, Eitan, it's like you're dipping in a mikveh. Your whole essence becomes pure. And that's why he says, I'm on the fourth paragraph right now. He says, uh, You see that paragraph? It yeah. says, when you learn Torah, when you pronounce the words out loud, it gives you life. You know, one of the 48 ways, like a, here, here, here's what I was meaning, Eitan. A fundamentally different way than learning Torah, than other subjects is if you're studying for your like uh, I'm a train. I was trained to be a CPA. So if I'm studying for my CPA exam, when I'm learning, the best example of this is if you go to a college library in a yeshiva. Yeshiva, everybody's screaming. There's a kol Tera. I forget. I I I kid you not. You know, Mr. Baghi Ben Yamin. So we went to Israel with my other cousin and Rafi Agalar. We went on an Israel trip. So we went to Rav Chaim Kanyanevsky. You should know he has a very very spiritual soul. He told me something. He felt that he felt as much holiness as he did at the Kotel as that he did at my alma mater, at the Yeshiva Mir. Because I took them over there. It's one of the uh, most glorious and beautiful things that we pray. The one thing I want from God is to see that here one day. Usually in the summers we have it, that a Kol Torah, a Bet Midrash full of people yelling and screaming the Torah. You understand? That's the fundamental difference. Torah, when you learn it, it's it's a whole, whole different ball game. The Gemara in Eruvin says this, that the Torah is life to those that uh, pronounce it out loud, right? So when I'm learning with a... Even if you're learning by yourself, right? It's good to say it very clearly and loud. There's a whole Zohar that says that the whole... Every, sec, every word of Torah that we learn, we create an angel. It, this is why Talmud Torah is higher than any other mitzvah, the study of Torah. You know why? If you put tefillin, you only create one angel. But let's say you learn Torah for an hour, you create hundreds of angels, right? Because every word is a different angel. But if, you, if you're learning by yourself, if you, when you learn Torah out loud with a beautiful melody that you see in the yeshivas, you understand? It's much, much more powerful. And that's what he says. If you just absorb a dap of Gemara with your eyes, without... By the way, Johns Hopkins has proved this scientifically also, that when you study, that's why when you take notes, it helps you remember more. When you say the words out loud, Rabbi Heinemann was telling me this, it helps you remember it. So what the rabbis wrote thousands of years ago, that when we lo- learn Torah... This is not just some random thing. Of course, it makes the Torah alive, right? But when you also learn out loud, it makes you retain it, remember it. This, been, this has been scientifically proven. He says, if chas v'shalom, you just learn with your eyes, Eitan, this is why, by the way, it's so good to have a chavruta, because when you have a chavruta, you have to say it out loud. But when you learn out loud, the Torah becomes alive to you. And the next paragraph, it says, Another difference by learning Torah is, it's fundamentally different than other subjects is, Eitan, I know you, there is a concept of study partners, but do you have to have study partners? Any yeshiva in the world, do you know only like an hour a day you're with your Rebbe? 90% of the time you're learning what? With the Chavruta, because 
Rabbi Neuberger of Sheftel said this, the dean of my yeshiva, the president of my yeshiva. He said a yeshiva, you know what makes a yeshiva great? More important than the rebbeim are the students. Because they're the soul of the yeshiva. Let's say you have the most all-star best teachers in the yeshiva, but the students aren't into it. Is that a great yeshiva? The talmidim are the soul of a yeshiva. And that's what he says that we learn in Pirkei Avot chapter 3. You know what we learn over there, Eitan? It says when two people sit and learn, God's presence comes there and is in between them, right? This is what we're trying to say. It's a different ball game learning Torah than secular knowledge, right? When you learn mathematics, now Eitan, I want to respect what you said. Of course the Rambam says, you know the menorah is the symbol of knowledge. They say there is seven branches of knowledge and then the middle branch that's higher than all of them is Torah. So I will grant that to you that science and like the Gra, you know the Grozal says music is the most spiritual science after Torah in the world. So do you know that the lights of the menorah, have you seen the picture of how they all uh, point to the middle one? So you're right. Like the Rambam says that all other knowledge can enhance your... Like if you know trigonometry, you can learn Gemara Erovin much better. If you know geometry, right? So I, I will grant to you that you can use any science to help you understand the Torah better. But science is not Torah, you understand? Torah is a whole different ball game. The reason why we're saying it is because Torah you have to learn out loud. Torah you have to learn in Yeshiva or if you're not in Yeshiva with Chavruta, you understand? And... It says, even if you learn Torah by yourself, God rewards you, it says in Pirkei Avot. So it says, when two people learn Torah together, the Shekhinah is between them. And it's a, it's a lower level. That's why, by the way, the Bir Halacha brings, and this is one of the tragedies that exists now. Okay, what's holier? If you have a hundred people learning in a Bet Midrash, in a study hall, or ten? It's a whole... The sum is greater than the total, you understand? Just like a husband and wife. One plus one doesn't equal two. A husband and wife, if you marry your soulmate, it's a whole different energy. It's not like they're just two human beings that are, have a partnership now. Now you're building the greatest structure in the world, which is a family, right? The sum is greater than the total. The total is greater than the sum, I mean. Same thing, when two people are learning in a yeshiva and a chavruta together, it's not like, oh... It's one person, it's another person. No, it's a whole Shekhinah there, Rav Volb is saying. This is a whole different uh, way of learning and understanding, right? In the secular sciences, you have not, you have not such a phenomenon. And that's why he says, um, next paragraph, Divrei Torah mitavim rak velimut bechavruta. Torah, especially oral Torah, like Zohar. Somebody was asking me, Shlomo Leib, you're asking me about... Zohar today, same thing. Kabbalah means you have to accept it from a Rebbe. Do you need a mentor to become an accountant? No. A Rebbe is, uh, is there for life for you. Because you know why? They was asked Rabbi Saul Solanter what Torah is. You know what he said, Eitan? He said Torah is science, Torah is psychology. Because if once you have a strong basis in Torah, you know who your lifetime partner should be. Because that's the most important choice you're making in life, right? How should you, you know, this whole business of Black Lives Matter, if they want to do a favor to the world, they should make sure that those innocent, pure, poor back children, which we should have a lot of, uh, you know, mercy on them, they should grow up with fathers, you understand? So Torah is going to teach you how to deal with who? Yourself. How to deal with who? Your wife. How to deal with who? Children. Because guess what? The greatest investment you can make in life is not the stock market. Not buying Apple or Google. But what? Is to have great God-fearing and angelic children. You understand? So Torah is different than other scientists because it's like this. And it says, It says, when there is a Chavruta and there is a Beit Midrash, guess what? There's a Simchata Torah. There's a love of Torah. You know why? It's palpable. Eitan, I'm not talking, talking. That's why when we went to Israel with Bali, he said, Rabbi, I kid you not, when we were in the Yeshiva Mir, 
This felt as holy as I was in the Kotel. Why is that? Because you have a few hundred people learning Torah there. And you know what? Hundreds of hundreds of times it's easy, Eitan. Without a Chavruta, you understand the Gemara or the Halacha totally wrong. You know why? Because your brain, two, two is greater than one. But the total is much greater than the sum. And the next paragraph, we're going on. Halimut bechavruta inukal. It's not very easy to have a chavruta. You know why? When I was in the yeshiva mirror, I had to change my chavruta four or five times. Actually, a chavruta, he punched me. Because he was short-tempered and I, we were arguing over a Rashi. But the point I'm sorry to say is that, you know, it is more convenient always to learn by yourself. But to have a chavruta is you have to do what to the other guy? You have to tolerate the other guy's temperament and behavior. Sometimes you're jealous of him, sometimes you envy him. He says a lot of young people, it's more convenient for them to learn Torah by themselves. But this is not a wise choice. You understand? Because you know this brings us back to the famous what thing. What about that, when you learn alone? Should you make sure to say the, the, the words with your mouth? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a whole Zohar on this. Every time? It doesn't what matter. What like, let's say you're reviewing a Gemara. I remember we were learning... What if it's not Mishnah Gemara? doesn't matter. Any Torah? It's actually... Anything. Any any mess. Musar, Rabbi Yisrael Salanta has a whole thing that you should screen that even. Because it'll... It, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to say. We're In this class, we're trying to... Accept, Compare and contrast Torah with secular knowledge. Anytime you learn Torah, even if you're totally by yourself, obviously if your parents are sleeping, you don't want to kill create a chilul Hashem. But that's why the, it's the greatness of being in a bed midrash. But that's why Hashem created whispering, right? <laughs> but the Zohar actually says when you say the Torah bekol, like our dear friend Rabbi Chakshur, that's why the name of his institution is Kol Torah. So even if you're learning by yourself without chavruta, you should. And in yeshiva, they actually give a whole melody to it, and it's so it's so beautiful, it's so uh, glorious, and it's uh, it's. Uh, I think everybody that goes there to Israel should definitely go to the Panevichi yeshiva, or one of the great yeshivas, and see at night seder how everybody's learning and hundreds of people are learning, and it's 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 a great thing. It says. The Torah only stands, will stand and exist in somebody that's willing to kill himself over it. And he understands or revolve in this context is killing yourself over it is you, you're willing to sacrifice your time and convenience to learn with a chavruta, right? Of course, Eitan, it's much more convenient just to learn yourself, right? You don't have to shut to the bed midrash and see your chavruta, but he says this is the way to to uh, go higher and higher in learning. And it says, Kol sa'ir karuk benitzanyot v'chol zeh yi afshar leitrech malchat sa'ad achirei tsa'ad. Hine alu leitpatel. He says that everything has its dangers in it. Haratzon hu chazak leitpatel b'shum ofen echriya. If you're only learning Torah because you're in the mood, then a lot of times you could not be in the mood. By the way, that's another reason why the Chavruta is so important. You know why, Eitan? Because if you set up to learn with me, if you're not in the mood, if you're by yourself, right? And Chatati Aviti Pashati, I can't tell you. This happened to me a lot. If you're by yourself, if you're not with it, what are you going to do? Just go rest or go out or, or waste your time on other stuff. But once you have the Chavruta, right? He's going to pull you in even if you're not in the mood of learning. You understand? That's the glory of it. So That's the guys have to get married young. Yeah, for sure. And he says, And he says, And also another thing during the Chavruta is, Eitan, God bless my Rosh Hashiva, Rav Weinberg. He helped... The most important thing in life, one of the most important midot to have is to be a good listener. Some people, if you if you want your chavruta to be a productive chavruta, right? Let's say you understand the Gemara one way. 
if you're not willing to hear the other side of the coin, you understand? It's not going to be fruitful. If um, Actually, I, I don't want to brag, but one thing that I've tried to do throughout the last 20 years is the 48 days, 49 days of the Omer. I tried to learn. Actually, I was learning with my whole family this. There, you know there's 48, four, 48 ways, keys to, to wisdom of Torah, right? One of them is to be a Shomei. Actually, I, was, I, I saw a thing from my Rosh Hashiva. He said, he once told his brother of Noah Weinberg, you're not a Shomei, you're not a good listener. You don't want to listen to my... And he said he felt his brother felt that was like the biggest disgrace ever. It's, that, that's part of the difference of learning Torah. When you're, when you're learning in a Torah partnership, you, you, the Chavruta becomes much more fruitful and makes both of you greater where you're what? Not a stubborn and like have uh, blinders on, right? He, you both want to get to the truth. So you, by the way, that's why halakha is like Bet Hillel. Because Bet Hillel actually always first used to listen to the point of view of Bet Shammai. You're named Hillel, right? And then they would make their own way of thinking. This is a symbol of humility, which is on the highest echelons and the pinnacle of Torah. It's the most basic thing that you need to become a great Torah scholar is to be what? Humble. So hum humble means, wow, maybe I'm wrong. I'll listen to my Chavrutas, right? Way of thinking. So it says that Naga Kinava Pachade Yushit Patel Ifnechi Pusha Metla Mitashal Torah. So all these different emotions that we have Revolve writes. Jealousy, right? Whenever you're in a social environment, right? You could be jealous of your friends. You can give up, right? You could have phobias, you could have scare you have can have anxiety. He says, guess what? When you're main mission in life with all your 110% energy, Eitan, is to get to the truth of the Word of God, all of these anxieties burn up. Right? Because, like I said, the Torah is like going inside the mikveh. So this is a whole different... We're seeing here that Torah, none of these... Hey, Eitan, in all reality, all these different phenomenons of Torah study, do they exist in secular sciences? No. So it says... He says, it should be the most important thing that whenever possible, you should have a charuta. It's going to make a world of a difference. Because Pirkei Avot says that. It says when two people are learning, Shekhinah is between them. When you learn by yourself, Shekhinah is not with you. You know why? That's why we, it's the same idea of a minion. People always ask me this question. Why is Davin with a minion so important, right? Because... It's, Eitan, it's very hard. Sometimes, like throughout the years, I've had dozens upon dozens of chavrusas. And it's very hard to tolerate the other person's method of learning. You're stuck with him, but in the end, if both of you have one goal and one goal in mind, to get to the bottom line of the truth, of what God is trying to say through the words of the oral Torah, then it's going to be head and shoulders different than just learning by yourself. Right? And it says, he says, Chok velo yavor. You should make it like the most ironclad rule. Come hell or high water, you should always um, learn with a chavruta. Now, reviewing is different, right? But whenever possible, you should have a chavruta to learn. Velo gam kashim bishvil sa'ir. This is also a big test for a young person, right? Because it's always more easy and convenient to do what? Learn by yourself. He says, actually, Revolve says, if you look in the 48 keys to become a Torah scholar, you know what many of them have to do with? Learning Torah with a Chavruta. Because he says, one of the 11th one is to learn Torah in a, with good friends. And if you look at the 6th chapter of Torah, of the Pirkei Avot, it talks about the Kinyan Torah, acquiring the, the, the wisdom of Torah. It, 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 it's almost impossible. I could tell you it's almost impossible if you just do it by your way. Just, even though, I mean, I don't want to discourage people also that are, don't have Chavruta, Chas Shalom, because 
right now, even though you're not physically with me, our hearts are together, and it's like Chavruta, right? Online learning may not be as be- as as good as face-to-face, like me and you are, Eitan, but the idea is always that you have this other point of view, right? And you, it's like a knife that two metals sharpen each other. He says, if you're able, Eitan, to overcome your Yetzirah, always to be by your loan and do your own thing and not have a chavruta, he says, if you're over to over, willing to overcome this and learn together with a chavruta, then this is uh, the golden path for you to climb the greatness of Torah wisdom. And everybody have a wonderful uh, month. Be well.